Hey folks. So what we're gonna do is uh let me just adjust that is um process the data from the other night's imaging, which is NGC7331 using PixInsight. Now I have actually been through and processed all this data so that we don't spend hours and hours just looking at process windows, you know, waiting to complete. So hopefully that will make the stream faster and uh also get us to complete faster. We'll get as far as we can to see, uh, see what comes up. So what we need to do first is just have a look at what I've actually got in terms of uh, data to process. Let's just find the folder. Yeah, and we have our flats. And what we do is we start off with processing our flats or calibrating our flats. And we do these by going to process all processes image calibration on here and then we add all our files which will be in two nights remember so we have the night one data all of our flats So we will create our first set of flats there. Output directory. They should go into a folder called flats cal. Which is this folder here. And master bias, we add our master bias folder, or sorry, our master bias file in from here. This is our master bias file. Master dark, we don't have a master dark because we don't take darks. Master flat, obviously, we haven't created that yet. We're in the, going to be creating it now. So we untick this one. And then you tick this or check this uh, button here apply global. What that will do is it will calibrate all of those flats with our master bias file. And that will then produce all these calibrated images just here. You see that it's got this underscore C on the back of the name. That's the, uh, tells you basically the files have been calibrated. So, what we then have to do is we then have to create a master flat folder, the actual master flat file. And we do this by using all processes and image integration. And we go and pick up the files. No, they're all in a dev folder here because this is where I've pre created them. We pick up all these cal files. Click open on those, the calibrated files. And then combination will be average, normalization, no normalization, the flats, and weights. Oh, we don't care about that for flats. Now there's been some new, there's been a new update to PixInsight and it's added some information here. I'm just going to leave all this as it is because I'm not sure what everything does yet because I only got the update today so I haven't had a chance to play with this. Um, so pixel rejection, the rejection algorithm for flats, we use percentile clipping and normalization would be equalized fluxes and we untick clip low range. and then. Again, we click that button there, apply global. And what that does, when you apply that global, it spends a bit of time and it integrates all our calibrated flat files, all of these, and then we'll pop up a file that looks like, so it opens, I double click that, there we go. It pops up a file like this, 
which is our master flat file, to be used for the first night's data. And a lot of my buttons have moved around. <laughs> this was the update has done this. Okay, I need to get moving on some of this stuff that I don't actually use. Just uh what do the screen transfer functions? Just move that down there. Oh, let me zoom in, zoom out. Don't need this one here. This is the zoom. Don't need to see that one. What's this one here? View preview. I don't use that one. That. There we go. Okay, so now we now I've got my buttons back as they were. So click that button there, and you'll see. This is the stretched image of our first master flat file, which we save as masterflat.xisf. And that's saved within here. So the next job we need to do is we have to create, we, ru we run through that process again and create the second master flat for the second night. But we've already done all this in good old Blue Peter style. So we run through and we do the second night's flats, which are done in exactly the same way. So basically you, what you have, um, if I show you the folder structure here, <clears throat> you have the night one flats with the cal folder and the master flat file. And you have night one lights, which are these files here. And in night two, we have our lights. There's quite a lot more in night two. And our flats. So we've got a master flat per night. We need two master flat uh, files because the camera's been moved. So you know, things like dust and things like that will move around. So we need two master flat files. Next thing we do after that is we calibrate our first night's imagings. And again, we go to image calibration. Reset that. What we're going to do here is we're going to calibrate all these images bear with me night one images all these we click open on that <clears throat> with our master bias Just there, and our master flat that we've just created. Night one, remember, dev flats, master flat, and master dark. We untick because we don't need to have a master dark. And then you click the apply global button, and that will then run away and it will start creating calibrated light files which you will then find because you have to set the output folder so you would set the output folder as night one in your lights directory and you would call it cal within your night one lights folder and um then you click that button there to apply global. And what that does is it creates we're on night one or night two? Night one. Is it creates within the cal folder K 
calibrated light images. So basically they're calibrated with the master flat and the master bias file. Following on from that, the next one we run is cosmetic correction. Cosmetic correction is used to get rid of uh, hot pixels. If we take a look at one of the files that we just created, anyone doesn't matter. What you'll probably see if we put a stretch on this, if we zoom in on this, you'll see lots and lots of white and black dots in these white squares, black squares. These are hot and cold pixels, which are generated by the camera. So we use cosmetic correction to, to try to remove these. In fact, it does remove them. By the time we get through all the way through and use uh, local normalization, they will be gone. So to use that with cosmetic, on cosmetic correction, you add your files from the night one cal folder within the lights. You add all those files there. These are the calibrated files. And remember I said you can tell they've been calibrated because they have an underscore C at the end of each file name. So you add those in there. The output directory will be CC for cosmetic correction. Okay. CFA, if you're using a DSLR camera, one shot color camera, you need to tick that CFA box. Uh, we're not going to use a master dark. But we're going to use auto detect and on hot sigma and cold sigma i'm going to the end going to enter the values 1.5 like that and then click the apply global button what this will do is it will go and calibrate or cosmetic not calibrate cosmetically correct all of those um, files from the cal folder and put the co cosmetically corrected files in the CC folder, which I will show you here. There they are there. So now if we take a look at one of those, should hopefully see a difference. Let's have a look if it actually does look different. Let's just shut down that cosmetic correction box. Let's see. Yeah, there's still a few there, but this, this fixes, you know, clean starts. This is part of the, the cleanup process, if you like, of all the images before we stack them together. And following on from that, we then have to run a process called debayering. And this is very simple. Debayer, just there. For my DSLR, the Bayer mosaic pattern is RGGB. If everything else uh, is default, click add files and then go to the CC folder and add all of those files in. Output folder, yeah, you guessed it, DB for debayering. And click the apply global button again. And what this does is it creates yet another set of files within there called db within the db folder and these have a d so if you look at the suffixes on the file name here we've got c cc and d now that's what we're up to so that's uh, calibrated cosmetically corrected and debayered let's take a look at one of those just out of interest what that looks like i shut down the debayer box put a stretch on that see how it looks We've got some color in now. Now RGB, not gray. Okay. Now what we what we have to do now is we have to repeat this operation on night two up to the DB point. So if I go back here and we look at night two within this dev folder, 
you'll see that in light I have light I had the light files a lot more of them here because I did a longer session on that night and then cal we have the cal files cosmetically corrected files and the db files except is what comes next because what we have to do now is we have to put all of those images those debayed images from night one and night two together using our subframe selector and pick which subframes are our best or our worst or whatever so just bear with me <clears throat> what we do is go to all processes subframe selector yeah, it's quite a an in-depth um, process this one what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let this one run so just bear with me I'm just going to I'm just going to set the preferences of the processor here down to two processes so it doesn't chew up Processor and rect the stream. Okay, so the way you do this is you first of all have to measure your subframes. And what we do is we add the files from both nights. So you go to click on add files and find our first night. Doesn't matter, you can add the second night first if you want. And then lights, cal, cc, db. You add all those by doing control A, click open, and then add files again on the second night's db files or dbad files. Remember lights, cal, cc, db. Add all of those. Okay, now you need to put, I need to put in some numbers here, which is specific to my camera. like that and now the output files when you actually output these you need to put the, the all the files somewhere and what I generally do is I create a folder called accept which are which is this one here that's where all the files go that we get accepted through this process this subframe selector remember this keyword here SS weight that's important because that's used later on in the in the processes so what we will do is we'll run this process to actually measure all these subframes and that will give us some readouts here on this on the measurement screen Let me just drop that up like right that Cross like that, and then click the Supply Global button. Um, and when this runs, it's going to take a few minutes, so uh, I'll uh, I'll let this run while it uh, and and I'll shut up while it's running, so you can watch it going. And it's going to basically choose. Ah, it's done it very fast because I've already done it. Well, that's good, isn't it? okay because we've already done the data it's got it in its um, memory of what um, what what numbers are what etc and you can see here this is a basically a graph of the fh fwhm of each of each image the stars and you can see straight away it's telling you this one is no good because it's it's you know it's spiked up here there's something wrong with that image so if we put a a click on that it will basically now exclude that image from our output files and the next thing we do is we add a formula in here which I'm going to look up and this comes courtesy of light vortex 
Light Vortex Astronomy's website. They have the formula on their web page, and I, I should put it somewhere else, but I keep going back to their website to, <laughs> to get the formula. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. So just bear with me while I find it. Right, here we go, here it is. So it's that there, it's quite an in-depth uh, formula. You click that, that arrow on the right there, it applies this weighting formula that I've just added into the subframe selector. Now what we'll do is on the measurements table, you choose weight. And you can see that the higher the weight is, the better the image. And the lower the weight is the worse the image. Now you can see that according to the software, it believes that image number 38 is our best image. So we need to remember 38 is our best image. Because it's got the highest weighting here. So I'm not going to run this because I've already done it. I'm going to shut that down. You can shut that down. And if we go to the accept folder, which of course I've already created because I've been through this and done all this. You know, There's no point, absolutely no point in all of us sitting here and just watching the, the process window running because uh, it's, it's it just sits there and runs for quite a long time when I'm running these processes. But here is the um, the completed subframes. And that's got an A after it now, <clears throat> excuse me, which is a for accept. So obviously we've now got all the subframes we want. We know which one is our best file. And the process that we run next will be, they've changed everything here. <laughs> I've changed a few things on Pix inside. They've put things in a different place. But we go to star alignment, which is our next process. And remember we said we used 38. 38 appeared to be about our best image. That's our reference image. That is the file that all the other files will be aligned to. So we click on that down arrow, go to the accept folder, and find image number 38, like that. Leave generate drizzle data ticked. And then we'll add all our files in from our accept folder. You see, we've now built two days data into one folder. And there's all our files. So we've got here 77 lights that we've added in here. Output directory. Now, star registration is the actual name of the process. So we're putting it into a folder called reg, short for registration or registered. And I generally leave everything else um, at default. I don't fiddle about with star detection and star matching. What I've found is that if you have to play about with any of the values in here to try to get uh, the images matched, then you have a problem with your, your data. And it's probably not worthwhile messing about with the defaults. That's what I've found anyway. And again, you click the little round circle here. And that will then go off and align all the images to themselves so that uh, they're, all the stars are in the same place on each and every image. And you end up with a folder that looks like this, excluding the other files. It's just got the XISF files in there. These other ones are from later processing, but you see this has got an R on it. That means registered. Okay. So now we've registered all those images. The next process that you use is a process called local normalization. Now this is a really, really good process. This is one of my favorites, even though it takes forever sometimes to run if you've got hundreds of images. Well, it does on my PC anyway. 
So you go to process, local normalization, add in our good file again, our, our best file, which was 38, but this time from the reg folder. Like that. Add all our files from the reg folder, including the 38 leave everything else as default now what this does is it also it, it helps to clean up more of those hot pixels and also remove it can remove in some cases star tra you know trails from satellites and things like that this outlier rejection is what does that and the output directory we're using reg again okay and click on the little button there apply global and what this does is it goes away and applies local norm local normalization to all of our registered light files. Okay. Which are, which ones are they? Those files there, XNML, local normalization. That's all our, file, our normalization files. And the RDZ, or the DRZ files, sorry, are our drizzle files. So now per image, we have three files. We have a drizzle file, the actual registered file, and the local normalization data. And after that, after you've done the local normalization, which is quite a long process, <clears throat> what you do is you run image integration. This is where you get the first look of what your image kind of looks like. So for image integration, I'm going to clear that because this is still there from doing the flats. Add files. Remember, we need to go to our accept folder and reg. Add all the files from reg. Okay. Now we add all our L, all our L norm files, our local normalization files from reg and our drizzle files as well from the registered folder. Now you can see they've added them because it says N and we're going to get a D. In time it'll add a D. There we go. Well, I've got N and D there next to each light folder on our image integration box. So drop that up there. Let's look at the other options that we have. Under image integration, combination again will be average. Normalization this time is local normalization because we're using those local normalization files. Weights is a fixed keyword, and this is SS weight. Remember it from the remember the SS weight word from the subframe selector? That's what we use there. And let's just have a look at the options here, see if they've changed here with the new version. Yes, they have. Uh, the main one here I'm interested in is keeping generate drizzle data ticked under image integration. So drop that up there. Under pixel rejection, the rejection algorithm is linear fit clipping. Okay. And local normalization again for normalization. And untick clip low range, same as we did for the flats. And check this apply global button what that will do is it will take quite a while but it will run a process run the image integration process and it will pop up an image and i'll show you that image in just a minute because i've previously saved the image and where did save it i believe it was saved night to dollar dollar work integration.xisf so this is the image that's come from all of those files that we had this is the one single image our, our first image so we put a stretch on that you'll see it's very red but this is what we're going to be working with after we've done drizzle integration and drizzle integration makes it bigger basically not going to get into any more technicalities than that 
So to do the Drizzle integration, we we'll just shut that down. Go processes, all processes, Drizzle integration, add all our files again from the reg folder. Okay, and we also want to add our lnorm files from the reg folder. And leave everything else as default and click the round apply global button. And what this will do after quite a while, it will produce an image, which is the one that we work on. Now, everything up to this point is what's called pre-processing. So it's all the all the stuff that you have to do to bring all the night's data together into one image. So this image game will be in this folder here, and it's called I saved it as Drizzle Integration. And there it is. This is our pre-processed image. That we now have to go to work on to make it look like space. This is a bit red, isn't it? And there's a few lines in there. So give me a minute, um, and I'll come back and show you how to uh, how to start pre -pro how to start. What can you call it? Post pre-processing. We have to process this image. So I'll be back in uh, in a couple of minutes. So that was the end of us pre-processing the NGC seven three three one data. In part two, I will process the data to give us hopefully a reasonable result.